Michigan State swept for the first time since 2003 and two, or 2004 season. And Luke Fickle makes an interesting hire that seems to be splitting opinion within the fan base. We get into that and a lot more on this week's episode of the Bucky Report. Welcome to the Bucky Report, your destination for all things Wisconsin Badgers. Authentic takes. Oh, my God. Game analysis. Touchdown, Badgers. Ring one up. And discussion from the fan perspective. Woo-hoo! Thanks for joining us. And on Wisconsin. Welcome to the Bucky Report. We are your hosts, Rajiv and Justin, back together on a Sunday evening to talk all things Wisconsin Badgers, football and basketball, and maybe even a little hockey today. Uh, we are at the Bucky Report on Twitter, YouTube, and wherever you can get your podcasts. If you like what we're doing, hit the subscribe button so you know when we make new content. Justin, before we um, get into <clears throat> the Badgers, we did have a pretty big day today, football championship Sunday. Quick thoughts on uh, on these games just to kind of kick things off? Um, well, the Lions did everything they could to piss that game away. Um, and then the other game played out the way I thought it was. I thought the Chiefs were going to win. I just thought Mahomes was a better quarterback. And I I will always go with the better, more seasoned quarterback. Like, unless you're somebody who – you have to be somebody who's proven that you can make some plays that are just freak show plays from a passing standpoint at this point if you're going to upset the guy who's the, the dude at the top. Right now, Mahomes is the dude at the top. Until somebody starts making some of those plays that are just like, what the hell is that? It's it's not going to happen. And, and I, I hey, Lamar, you're great talent. You're not a good enough passer. Like, this is – when you get to this level, this is where the top defenses are. You're going to have to be able to make some throws. Just not good enough. Yeah, I was really hoping it went the other way. I really wanted to see the Ravens and the Lions both win today. Um, the Ravens, you're right. I mean, Lamar Jackson just didn't make the throws. How many deep ball misses did he have? And you just can't. You can't have that in the NFL. You're totally right. And credit to, to Steve Spagnola, um, defensive coordinator for the Chiefs. I think he did a great job. Like they, you know, he 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 affected the games the right way. Every game they've played thus far in the playoffs, he's done that. Um, I thought he did a great job against Josh Allen last week, and then now tonight. Yeah, I mean, you got to give him credit. He's the best player on the planet, Mahomes. It's just that simple. And he makes plays when he needs to. And if you're going to win Super Bowls, you got to do it. You're exactly right. And the other game, this is actually one of my three big takes. I'm just going to say it now. Um, I think that I was so excited at halftime because the Lions were up. And I, I wanted the Lions to win because whatever. Why not have the underdog go and, and a team that has never been to the Super Bowl? Dan Campbell, who I like, by the way, coach of the Lions, made some atrocious decisions in the second half. You're going to not kick the field goal when you're up 14 on the 28-yard line to go up 17, three scores. Nope, you're going to go for it and then risk it. And then six minutes to go late in the fourth quarter, you're down by three, you're on the 30-yard line, you're still not going to kick it. I don't understand it. And then to end the game, instead of having all three timeouts after scoring, one minute left in the game, third and goal, they decide to run the ball forcing them to take the timeout. I still wouldn't have taken the timeout. I had to run the kick, the field goal unit out there or had a play called. They use a timeout to where once they did score the touchdown on fourth down, still a bad decision, by the way, then the only thing they can do to win the game is get the onside. That's unbelievable. Th- those are just really, really bad decisions after an- one after another that to me is unforgivable. I mean, if I'm a Lions fan, which I'm not, I just... I feel horrible right now, and I'm really, really pissed off at my coach. Yeah, it's that tough awful. when you feel like it's not on the players. Now, there was some of it. That there were a lot of the drop interception but, yeah. and everything. But but when your coach doesn't help you out, and it's – I mean, it, it's tough because we. how many times do you see a coach make a good call and the play just doesn't work out? And that was some of what happened today for the Lions. Like, they made good calls. There were guys that were open, and they didn't make plays. But – some of your decision making as a coach also was part of the accountable reason for you losing that game. Yeah, I mean, no doubt, no doubt. Anyway, on to Wisconsin stuff. Uh, by the way, Ryan Herrings might jump in here, and if he does, he's obviously he probably is just too excited. I think he's had you know a lot he's, of IPAs. He's, he's streaking through Eastern Connecticut right now. That's right. I mean, you all know he's a he's a big 49ers fan. So congrats to Mr. Ryan Herrings on his team making the Super Bowl. Uh, the rest of us are not that lucky, whether you're a Packers fan like most of you or a Colts fan like me. It's not that good. 
Uh, Justin, three big takes from the week. Let's kick off the show like we always do. What are your three big takes of the week? Yeah, Connor and Winter being instrumental in the uh, the last game were the reason why we were able to get that, that game rolling. Um, those two guys got the offense triggered in that game and got everyone else going. They brought a ton of energy and their time out on the court, and it was a huge lift. Yeah. Uh, number two, I actually am fine with the Grinch hire that we'll be discussing later. I think people are over getting a little over the top with it. Um, if he was play calling, yes, I would feel far more far more uncomfortable with it. I'm interested to see the recruiting. Like I, he needs to be at least a good recruiter. I don't know if he, he needs to be great, but he needs to be somebody who adds to that room. And then the third one, I'm going to give it up to the uh, men's hockey team pulling up a big victory over Michigan to get the split in this one. I think they won six to five in overtime. Well, impressive work by a team that continues to be excellent this season. For the first season under the new head coach. So good work, fellas. Yeah, that's good. Those are all good shots. My my number one thing is uh, Greg Gard has the best chance since 2015 to reach the Final Four. I think this is the best team that we've had. I think, you know, you could, you could look back at maybe 2020 and a couple other years and, and the Johnny Davis year. But to me, this is the best chance that I think Gray Guard has had. Well, the, the Badgers have had since the Bo Ryan um, 2015 Final Four. Number two, Stephen Crowell, uh, I think, will be the barometer and the most important player through the month of February. This is going to be a gauntlet, which we're going to get into. Uh, so I think he is absolutely critical in, in many, many respects, which we'll talk about a little bit when we get to that. And number three, I already said it, Dan Campbell made some of the most ridiculous decisions I've ever seen in the second half of a football game. I wanted to throw something at the TV. I just, I don't understand it. You, you're on the road. You can't make mistakes like that. So that being said, um, Tyler, I'm she gonna, has a comment up here. You want to comment? Yeah, I'm going to throw this comment up, but I actually think it's something we'll dive into quick before we get into everything else. Tyler, she thoughts on the Michigan hire, good or bad for Wisco? I think it's an absolutely huge boom to Wisconsin on this one. Sharon Moore could be really good, but what he does not have is a reputation right now that is going to win over people right away. Now, he's got Michigan behind him, but he doesn't have coach cachet yet, which is something that is important. Harbaugh had that. When he went to recruit on kids, kids wanted to play for Harbaugh. There are kids who want to play for Michigan, and there are kids, kids who come to your school because of your coaching staff. Wisconsin is getting kids right now because they want to come play for Luke Fickle because he th they think he's a winner. Sharon Moore has not proven that yet. And I, it's nice that he had some victories as the, the fill-in coach for Harbaugh. That's not the same as completely running your program for an entire season. Like There's so much that was not on his plate during that time. I think it's a really ballsy move by them to to put him in there when they could easily get somebody more established. And there's a lot of room for this potentially to go sideways for them. And they they already lost a lot on offense heading into this year where I think they could be not a – they could be good, not great. It would not shock me. Yeah. I, I agree. I think that I think where the question for me will lie is whether he can hold on to people through the transfer portal cycles. I think recruiting – when you're, I mean, he's, he's a good recruiter, but when you tell, when you look at Michigan, Michigan's always going to get those guys because they're Michigan. They have that Michigan cachet, but you, but you said it correctly that the coach also has to have that. So I think he'll get them in. I don't know that he can keep them. So I think you're going to, you, the question is, will will he be able to keep guys through the transfer portals? And, and even the guys that he already has in that class, like come on, Dominic Nichols, come to Wisconsin. Yeah. I feel like that's the kind of thing that I, I really want to see how he holds on to things. As far as his ability to coach the program, I think that's a fine choice. I think he absolutely can coach Michigan to be what they are. I I have never been a huge Harbaugh guy as far as his coaching. So I think that I, I don't think this is a big step down as far as coaching. Now, recruiting, of course, is always another story. So I think that's that's a fair point. But um a really good comment up there. Good question there. Let me take this mm -hmm. thing down here. All right. So um, let's start with basketball, Justin. Um, Minnesota, Michigan State this week. Minnesota was obviously during the middle of the week. We did win 61 to 59. And of course, we thumped Michigan State on Friday night. Initial thoughts um, on Minnesota now that you've had a few days to kind of, you know, just absorb it. And before we had another game, anything that you like, anything that sticks out in your mind about that game? I just thought we played poorly. Like, I mean, the defense was improved in that game, but I just, it was an off night for us. And we let them hang around, and we probably shouldn't have, but they're not a good team. 
I mean, it's a game that we 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 got up and then we just kind of let it go, and that that can't happen. Like that's that's going to get you stung eventually if that's the way you play. Yeah, you know, for me, I I, I think that ultimately you kind of said it. I just feel like you're going to have these games and you got to win these games. And when you win these games, it's something to celebrate. I, mm-hmm. I'm a huge. I know that it would didn't look pretty and there was a lot of mistakes and. You know, we we had some ugly, ugly looking numbers from the field. Um, you know, but that's that's gonna happen. We were seven of seventeen from three. Um, Max Husband shot four of ten. You know, uh, AJ Stor- store under thirty three percent shooting. But <clears throat> you got to fight through that. Mm-hmm. If you if you've watched any Big Ten basketball this year, as I know you guys all have, you've seen that it's very difficult to win on the road. Very very hard to get these wins. You got to get them when you can get them, and so we'll take anything that we can get. It's 10 games on the road. If we win six of them, seven of them, we'll probably win the conference. So I'm, I'm good with it. And I think it teaches your team about adversity. You fight through that kind of stuff. You're going to have those stodgy kind of games come March too. So you need to really know how to play them. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and I'm, and I'm ultimately I'm okay with it. Uh, Michigan state. However, let's get into that a little bit. Just a fantastic game. Wire to wire. AJ store was lights out. The whole team was great. What are some of your initial things? Like, what what did you love the most about that game? We are, we both did the reaction show on lockdown, but what did you love most about this? Sure, I, I just think that Michigan State is kind of a broken team this year. Like, they're they're really one guy, and then a bunch of just misfit toys. So it's Walker, and if if he doesn't carry them, there's really nobody else you look at on that roster that you're like, we need to really worry about this guy. He could dominate now. They have a bunch of guys that can go for 15 in a game, but there's nobody that you really look at that you're like, we can't let this guy get rolling. There's there's no store on that team that you're like, if this guy catches, you know, knocks down a couple here, we're in big trouble. Wisconsin's got like four or five of those guys. And I don't think Michigan State has other than Walker. He's really, I mean, Hogarth had a good game, but other than him, did anybody really show anything overly impressive for them? Walker was the other, probably their second leading scorer, and he wasn't overly efficient in doing it. So it wasn't a bad game. Like we crushed them in that game. And other than playing a little sloppy with what under six minutes left, we were dismantling them. We were at like one over one point four points per points per possession. Yeah, Malik Hall had a decent game for them, uh, thirteen points, but nothing, nothing crazy. Um, yeah, I'm. I was honestly just. I'm super pumped about this win. I, I know that Michigan State's a little bit down. They're not where they're expected to be, and that's fine. But they're still Michigan State. They're still a team that has given us fits over the years. That you know, great, great rivalry between Izzo and Bill Ryan, and then moving on to guard. And I think we've had excellent games. Historically, you look at the last twenty years in the conference. You could argue that these are the two best teams the conference has had in the last twenty years. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's 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 an argument to be made. Certainly, Michigan State, but there's an argument to be made that we are also up there. So I think it's always huge to win that. And when you sweep the season series, it just sends a message to the rest of the conference as well. Um, the thing that I, when I, looking back, I just feel like you know. This is one of those games that we could have got. We we could they could have gotten us. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we're going to slip up, and I'm really glad we didn't slip up here. Not only did we not slip up, we kind of put the pedal to the metal a little bit. They never got really within ten points of us in the second half, and that's because, as we've said many times on this show, the scoring slumps are gone. Knock on wood. Let's not bring that back, and our ability to get to the line continues to be good. We're shooting well. Every single thing is just working, and. Yeah, we're not, and I'm not saying, by the way, my initial take, I'm not saying we're a Final Four team. I'm just saying that I think this is our best chance since then to get to the Final Four. But I'll tell you, I mean, I I really, Justin, I really feel like we're moving in the right direction here, and we absolutely can contend for this conference, and we're going to get into that a little bit, a little bit more soon, but I just, I mean... I love this. I love, I think it sends such a message when you beat Michigan State like that and you sweep them and you beat them the way that we did. We're not slipping up in these games. That's so huge for us. It, oh, I 100% agree with that. I mean, looking at this team, we are far more dangerous than most of the teams. And this was a game that could have been a bad one for us. I think this is the best our defense has honestly looked in like the last, what, the last month maybe? We, we've kind of taken our foot off the gas a little bit there. Michigan State shot pretty well, but it wasn't because we weren't playing good defense. It was just they were hitting some tough shots. Like, we did a great job of keeping them out of the paint early, and they were just hanging around hitting some really difficult looks. 
And this is a game that I wouldn't be shocked if we, if with the way we were playing defense early, if we would have won by, we would have been 20 plus in a game where they weren't shooting necessarily as well as they were. So it honestly does not probably tell it quite the, as clear of a story as it probably should, given the level of defense that I think that we were actually playing in this game. But it's pretty clear we had a decisive victory in this one. I just think that the defensive metrics, unfortunately, aren't going to show it quite as dominant as it was because I, I think we made them really uncomfortable, even though they did not shoot terribly in this game. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I just I'm, – I'm just so happy with what I'm seeing right now. I'll tell you what, that's just really how I feel. I'm just really, really happy about it. All right, give me something that you didn't like about this Michigan State game. We talked about great things. What – what, what what do you feel like you didn't like about this game? There's not a lot, honestly. Um, we played a pr- pretty clean game. Like I said, we had the little lull at the end of the game where it seemed like we let it down a little bit. We we're up almost 20 points. Like, whatever. I, I I will say I did not love the the substitution patterns that we had in the second half. We built a big lead, and it felt like guard just did not want to take people out because he was worried we were going to give it up. But it's like winter played great in the first half. Connor played great in the first half. And I realized Connor was following a little bit, but who cares? If he follows out, who cares? Is it the end of the world if you're like third string shooting guard right now is out of the game? Like you're going to put a starter a bit back in. So you have somebody you actually feel is a better player currently for you than what Connor is. But Connor could use those reps and he was playing well. So in my opinion, he should have played the, the backups more. I think Winter actually needed a lot. He got a lot of confidence in the first half. I actually think he could have got more in this game because I think that it was a game where you looked at it and you're like, neither of these bigs really put the fear of God in you. It's a good game for him to just go out there and kind of bang around down on the post a little bit and get used to get some confidence playing out there and playing defensively. Yeah, I really hope that we, I mean, we talked about that a lot. We've talked about the rotations. I really hope that doesn't come back to bite us and we're not talking about it again in March and we're not sitting here on the show and being like, boy, you know, because we didn't get these guys confidence when we needed to, and we didn't get Winter in there enough, we didn't get Connor in there enough, and all of a sudden you got foul trouble because in the tournament they do call those games a little tighter, and mm-hmm. then your foul trouble can come up. And the deeper your team is, the more experienced those guys are coming in and playing in difficult games, the better off you're, yeah. you're going to be. March uh, is far more summer. finesse. Well, I, I want to say one last thing on yeah. this. The other thing was is I think that they, they need to get Klezmet and, and Blackwell playing some more point just so they can steal some time for Chucky. Like, I do not like him playing mid-30s for minutes when everybody else is playing, like, mid-20s. He's going to burn out by the end of the season if this is the way you're going to play him. And Man, you don't want totally that in you. And if you're going to put Lindsay in there, then put Lindsay in there. And if you're not going to put Lindsay in there, then don't. You don't even but, need to. Just put Blackwell or Klezmet at the point. Right. Nobody's pressing us. And I agree. I just feel like either commit to it or not. Like the last game, I think he played like three or four minutes. Like just play him or don't play him. And if you and I would say don't play him and just keep. Yeah, exactly. Blackwell, Klesmit. There's plenty of people that that can do out there. Chucky Hepper played 35 minutes in the last game, 33 minutes in the Minnesota game. Like that's yeah. that's way too much. And I mm-hmm. I completely agree with you. Uh, let's make out some comments here. Kathleen Burrow says it feels like the Badgers basketball team has been in a mini slump. They're going to have to pull it out together for February. I think um, I think they've they did a great job in the Michigan State game to you know if they were in a bit of a slump after the the Minnesota game I, they did a great job there. I think that one had their attention was part of it is that they this is the first game they looked at it and they were kind of like yeah this is a game we need a, a team we need to bring our A game against and they locked in. I don't like them using a switch, but I guess it is what it is at this point. You just have to hope that they turn it on as much as they need to. Yeah. Bo Dragon says every team we play has a losing record except Purdue and Illinois. I that's obviously not. They're not. They don't have losing records now. And I think that the Big Ten is better than people think it is, including you, Bo. I I think it is. I know that Justin also has some opinions about this. I I think the Big Ten is fine. I really do. I, I don't. I mean, I, I watch a lot of Big Ten basketball. Like I know many of you do. I think the conference is actually in pretty good shape. But you know, we'll see. We'll see come tournament time. Um, T Temp says I look for nice jump in February and March from CE three and Chucky. Hopefully, trending up. For March, epic one for Badgers. How many wins do you think will be at the end of the be at the time by the by the time the Big Ten season ends? Um, I, I've said before, I think conference victory probably means 15 wins at least, maybe 16 and four, probably 15 and five might get it done. Yeah. I'm thinking the Badgers probably go 14 and six. That's that's kind of where I'm at right now, I think is where we're gonna end up, which which means we still have to lose five more games, which hopefully we don't, but I think that's probably where things go, just because. 
I don't really see us beating Purdue. So that's two. And then, you know, slipping up here. Maybe, maybe it's 15 and five. Maybe it's 16 and four and we win. If we're 16 and four, we're probably winning the conference. I would agree with that. Um, I would say 15 and five could have 14 and six. We start getting to the point where it's, I, I just don't think you can hang with Purdue at that point. They're, they're just too good. Um, low key, if we can get past Nebraska this next game, that's a big one for us. They play extremely well at home. And we need to be locked in for this one. And I worry a little bit about it because we we basically just shot the lights out the last time we played them. This is not a game I want to go into against them and think that we can just shoot shoot them off the court. They get too, way too streaky, and their home road splits are crazy right now. So we really need to be locked in for this game, and the defense needs to be incredible. So if we can do that yeah. and just lock it down and get ahead early and kind of stomp on their throat, that'd be great. And hopefully you do that so you're locked in for the game against Purdue. But you've got to find a way to, to get this one because I most of the teams I'm just not – they don't have the offensive firepower that I think can really challenge us. We could definitely have off nights and lose a game. But from an offensive standpoint, there's not many two games we're going to get into shootouts with where we're, we're not going to be on the winning end of that. As long as we can keep up what we're doing, I, I just fear that we're going to have that game that we got some kind of crazy – Boring drought and it's going to be a killer. Jeff Olson says play starters too much in the second half. Connor should get be getting twelve to fifteen minutes. Yeah, I don't really disagree with you there. Um, before we get into February a little bit, Jess, I'm going to give you some player ratings uh, from the Michigan State game. Give me higher, lower, or the same. I know I'm putting you on the spot with this one, but just give me give me your initial thoughts on it. So for Michigan State, I gave Chucky an eight. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think defensively he was great. I think that's good. I mean, scoring wise, we'd still like to see a little bit more out of him. It's 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 not hurting us right now, so it really doesn't matter. But I'd like to see him be a little more of a threat, just to keep defenses a little more honest. But he's the straw that stirs the drink right now, so I'm, I'm fine exactly. with that. Yeah, I and I'm as much as I'd like to see him score more because I feel like we are going to need him and depend on him at certain times. I, look, if he's playing defense like that, bring it on, man. Mm-hmm. I don't care if he scores zero points or three points or whatever. That's fine. We got people that can do the scoring. So, yeah, I agree. Uh, Max, I gave a seven out of 10 to. I said nothing really spectacular there. Just yeah. a decent game. He was solid. I, I think that was that's, that's probably a good way to put him in that game. Hit a really, really challenging uh, layup while he's driving down for the three uh, plus, and one. So, yeah, I mean, he, he didn't put up a huge total, but he was a guy who still did. He was still effective out there for us. Yeah, uh, AJ store nine out of ten. What do you think? I think that's legit. Um, I think really the I, the the bigger thing that I'm harder on store because the secondary stats are what drive me nuts with him. Like only two rebounds in this game, um, and it's it's like, dude, you're a six seven athlete. How do you end up with only two rebounds? But it's it's one of those things. Like I remember a few years back when Wisconsin's big men were getting like one or two rebounds a game, and it's like, how is this possible? I, I think it was the the Johnny Davis here where they would get like no rebounds. And that was because he was kind of stealing them all. I would like to see store get up to four or five a game. doesn't have to be crazy, but at least seem like it's a, like a reasonable amount for him, the amount of time that he plays. Um, but no, I think a nine is good. He was efficient. He was over 50% shooting. Took some yeah. shots that you probably don't love, but I mean, he's high efficiency. I don't really care when he scores those shots. He's going to be rated higher mm-hmm. and we're going to win more easily. I mean, mm-hmm. that's just kind of what it comes down to. Tyler Wall, 7 out of 10, nothing spectacular, but not a bad game. What do you think about that? Uh, Yeah, I thought he was pretty good. I think he played really well defensively for the most part. Um, You know, every once in a while I'll have a game where he just doesn't have it offensively. This was not a game that I felt that way. I don't feel feel like he really forced anything. Took a couple of three-point shots, one of which was like he did not want to be taking. It was basically the shot clock was going to go out. Um, actually both of them, I think were pretty close on that. So, I mean, those are, those are shots I don't hold against him. They're not ones that he's looking for. I would say that he's probably, I would say that that's probably a fair score. Yeah. Stephen Crowley gave a nine two. I thought he played pretty well. Um, I think that he did a pretty good job down in the post in terms of his footwork was really good in this game. He played very physical. I actually think that he could have probably had a lot more if we got it, if we kept pushing. We got a little sloppy with him late in the game when we we tried going back to him and forcing it into the and we kind of were passing into the double almost. Like they had a guy that was already showing hard as the second man on him, and it's like you can't put him in that position. Like he's already got a guy on top of him by the time he catches the ball. Like that that can't be the way that that plays out. But I thought he played pretty well. I, he was definitely the best big man in this game. 
Um, he had a nice block earlier on in the game, and that's something we don't see a whole lot from him. I'd love to see him get that up to the point where he's at least blocking one a game. But, you know, I, I think that's a fair score for him. Yeah, I um, I loved Crowell in this game. I think the way he, he owned the post. And listen, he wasn't playing up against a really physical big, big, and that's always going to help. But, I mean, I, I just feel like as he goes, so goes this team. I think, you know, earlier in the season, we wanted him to shoot more threes, and he's doing that now. He took two more. He's getting out there when he's when he's open. He's shooting. He's stretching the floor a little bit there. And then when he plays confidently and strong in the middle, I mean, he is really effective. And I feel like the quality of those shots, the the percentageness of that has gone up. Like if you look at last year and some of those hook shots that he takes, and you know, whether he's turning in the lane or out, like some of them were just kind of a little off. They didn't really look clean and crisp. But now they're looking really, really good. Like the shooting is better. His ability to score in the paint has increased. And I feel like I'm so happy with what he's doing. And when he has a bad game and misses a lot of those, we're gonna we're gonna really struggle. And when he plays like this, I mean, we're gonna win. Yeah, the way I look at it with this particular one in terms of him, um I, I made the comment that I thought that he get he has times where he gets intimidated when he plays against somebody more physical. I don't think he gets intimidated necessarily. I think what ends up happening is when he can't out physical the other person, he really struggles. And you could see in this game he he was comfortable that he was the, the stronger guy out there. When he plays against teams that have a guy who's a little bit more of a brute and a little bit stronger than him, he struggles, and it seems like it, it affects him a lot more than it does some guys. Uh, it, it seems to really take away from his ability to create separation and get easy shots. Maybe that's more he just doesn't necessarily have those moves where he's the finesse game plays through a little bit more. Um, but – I, I feel like he's played really well for us this season, and there's going to probably be a few games where we probably need more out of him than what he can actually give us. But for the most part, you know, this team is is built to be a problem for most. There's not a lot of teams with a seven foot big man that actually is fairly skilled in the country right now. Right, absolutely. All right, here are my bench ones. I'll I'll, give, I'll read them all. I'll form them to you, and you tell me if you think any of them are out out the wall here. John Blackwell, I give an eight. Gilmore a seven. Nolan and Connor both an eight. Anything that stands out to you there? Based off of prior, I'm giving Winter a nine. Okay. Simply because, I thought about that. Simply because it's like this was such a step up in performance for him that I was like, all right, I, I'm really impressed with him. That's that's the cleanest I've seen him shoot. Like he seems so confident going up with a shot the second he saw he had some space in this game that I was like, this is a different guy. And if this is the guy we get the rest of the season where he's just that comfortable, other things are going to start to full, flow for him. He'll get more comfortable taking the ball off the dribble, which I think is something that's it's going to be a work in progress for him. But I think it's something that he can really long-term is, is going to be an area where he's really strong. But it's an area that if he starts to hit like this, that teams are going to have to show on him really hard. And hopefully he can put the ball on the floor a couple times and maybe draw some fouls or actually get all the way to the rim. He's certainly athletic enough. Yeah, he is. And uh, yeah, I liked him too. I thought about giving him a higher score, um, but I also gave Connor an eight too. And I'm going to talk about him a little bit. I think we're, we're seeing that confidence grow with Connor and we weren't really sure, right? What was going to happen and whether or not he was going to be playing any minutes. We talked about whether or not we'd see him play over 10 minutes, rest of the season, things like that. Uh, but he's, he's in there. He's shown guard that he can now step in um, and be a productive guy off the bench, even defensively. And he's getting better defensively, but What's what's more important to me is that he's that shot is coming around to where he's confident now. And we mm -hmm. talk a lot about confidence. I do certainly. And I just feel like that's what you need. So when you get in a tight game down the stretch, you can put him in there and know that he can make a shot. Um, when you're in a situation in the tournament or before that, when you get foul trouble and he needs to play 20 minutes potentially, well, you know that you can rely on him on the defensive side. So it was a good game to see Connor in there. And I think hopefully we can continue to see some improvement. Let's get a few more comments in here. Uh, Ryan Bolt. Store is amazing, but a little lackadaisical like in Minnesota where he did not block out the free throw shooter. Yes, that's correct. At the end of the game, he just stood there looking around. I think uh, that that kind of goes to what Justin said about secondary stats, right? That is definitely something that is an issue. I When I was doing the, uh, you know, we, we named AJ Store the player of the game. And I was looking for another stat to put up there, but I couldn't find anything. So I had to just throw on like his three-point percentage. I'm like, man, like there's no secondary stat that's any good. Dark Ray says, crowd needs to rebound and finish inside more consistently. Uh, but he's been solid this year, winning Gambler. Maybe Izzo's worst team ever during his post games. It almost looks like he's ready to walk away because of the frustration with this team. What do you think about that, Justin? You think uh, Izzo's time is is done soon? 
I think it's getting close. I honestly think that he's getting to the point where he's just getting frustrated with what's happening. And the game is changing somewhat too. So I wonder if he's getting to the point where he's kind of like, is this really worth it to me? Or is it better off me letting somebody younger kind of take advantage of this? I don't know who he puts in to replace him. But it'll be really interesting to see if he can find somebody that he is actually legitimately, you know, a quality follow-up. I mean, we clearly guard was at least a B plus if he's if he's not an A. You have people who are going to potentially go into place. Look at this. Look at it this way. Look how Duke looks this year. They did not hit on somebody. Yeah. And they have all the people, they can go grab anybody to fill that spot. So it's not a lock that Michigan State finds somebody that's going to be a quality replacement in this situation. Um, Izzo's probably a guy who's I would think has a pretty good eye for talent and coaching in terms of coaching, but we'll see what happens there. But I yeah, I think he's getting really close. I would be shocked if he's not if it's more than like another season or two at the most. So let's talk about the Big Ten a little bit more. We're going to get into a big, uh, big February we have coming up. So right now, Wisconsin tops the conference eight and one. Purdue eight and two after a uh, win at Rutgers today, and then you've got two teams with three losses. That's Illinois and Northwestern. Not pretty much is where it ends as far as the Big Ten championship sort of con- contenders go for me. Uh, Nebraska five, Nebraska and Maryland are both five and five. I, they're not really contenders at this point. You have you have too many losses at this point already. But that's really where where it is. Nebraska is the first team we have up this week, and boy, we've got a really tough February. I'm going to read you the schedule. So we play five road games and three home games. The road games are Nebraska, Michigan, Rutgers, Iowa, and Indiana. And the home games are, of course, Purdue, yikes, um, Ohio State, and Maryland. That is a tough stretch, Justin. I mean, that is a you're talking about eight games that will decide where how this 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 these standings look come the end of the season. Do we have a chance to win the title? Are we just fooling ourselves and Purdue's going to run away with it? We will know that very soon. We'll probably know next weekend, really, truthfully. I mean, if Purdue beats us next weekend, I think they're probably they're yeah. really in the driver's we, seat. We need to split with them or we're in it's gonna be tough. Yeah, I mean, so looking at that schedule, so I mean, uh, okay, so obviously Purdue's a tough game. Nebraska, what other, I mean, are there, what are the other road games that you're really concerned about? Michigan, Rutgers, Iowa, Indiana. Do any of those feel like that's, those are going to be tough to, to win? I, I don't want to sound arrogant about this, but no, not really. I, I think if we play yeah, to the level you got that we've a lot been, of road confidence, if, man. If, I, if we play to the level that we've played most of the season, I actually think Nebraska is the team I'm most afraid of because I think they can go nuclear on you and just go on an absolute scoring binge. None of those teams scare me from the, the standpoint of if Wisconsin plays a B plus game, none of them are going to beat us. If Wisconsin plays a C game and they play a B, I think we still win most of those games. If we play a C and they play their A, yeah, we can certainly lose. But most of the teams, I just don't see them scoring consistently enough to be able to to play us for 40 minutes. They can certainly get up on us, but I just don't know if if we're actually clicking, if most of the teams other than Purdue and, and a couple others that can really score are going to be able to hang with us. Defense, Iowa, obviously, has to stay tight Iowa is scoring 86 points a game. I People are going to – people can score on us. The, the, and we beat them by, like, I, 10 still. I know we did. I know we did. But the thing is, like, we still have to score more than that. Like, I don't know that we – I mean – Do they have a guy that you're from. legitimately afraid of going and just torching us? I don't think they do. Maybe – what is that? Tony – was it Tony Perkins? Yeah. Maybe – but I don't know if he, if I if I trust him to go off for twenty plus against us and and put us in the. I mean, they've that Sanford kid for them. I mean, look, so he's not bad. Me, I just I just don't see those guys going out there and putting up twenty plus. For me, listen, I I'm not, I I think any of these games are 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 losable games. Seriously, I really do. I just Michigan has guys that can shoot. They 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 can score they a little bit. They're they're, they're scoring a little better. But the thing is, like, we should win these games. But well, that's I, what I'm, I'm saying. Not, we're favored to win, but I just feel like it's not realistic to me. It's not realistic that we're going to go. So we have five road games. You're saying Nebraska might be a little iffy. Yeah. Then you're talking about winning the other ones like that. If we do that, if we go. If we win all five road games in this in this month, we're winning the conference. I don't. I just feel like that's not really going to happen. So what gives me cause for pause there is Il, um, Iowa and Indiana because Assembly Hall. That's a tough place to play. I, don't, I mean, I know that we've won games there, I, and 
And they, they, they obviously like when we played them recently, they were without their, their five. I forgot his name. Um, they've got, they've got him and they've got renew that are really, really good. They've got Galloway and they, they've got people that can shoot. I just, uh, road games always scare me, man. They just always scare me. Now the home games, Purdue, um, Ohio state and Maryland. So, okay. Purdue, we, we know about that, but uh, does do Ohio state or Maryland, uh, you know, do, it, you, you see a, pose any risks coming into the Cole center maryland no ohio state i think i'm a little bit more worried about potentially depending upon how those guards play we struggled with them the first time around chucky really struggled against thornton that's one that i'm a little concerned with um we'll see how that plays out but i honestly think that there's a a solid chance that we can we should beat Maryland. I think that the game is a little bit more of a coin flip with Ohio State. And then Purdue, if it's at home, I would say that's probably 60-40 them. But if we have a good game, we could win it. Like, they're just – they're dropping bombs on people right now. Like, they're blowing people off the court. We're going to have to play really well in that game to take them down. Bo Dragon says, you guys crack me up. I hate guard, and I still see the Badgers winning all but one or two. This is my thing. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is my opinion on this. And you guys know I'm, I'm you Homer Bo. I mean, I just, <laughs> honestly, man, like I feel like I'm waiting for the shoe to drop a little bit. I feel like I we've been really high on the scene. We're eight and one in the Big Ten conference on one game ahead of Purdue. Like, come on. I just and our only loss is at Penn State, a game that we absolutely could have won in, in, in a different day. And we we played okay, although we didn't, you know, they they shot lights out. They if they don't shoot lights out, we're nine and zero in conference and mm-hmm. and in num- number five or six in the country. I'm sorry, but I'm I feel like I'm waiting for the shoe to drop. Now I'm excited and I am pumped about this, but I just so when I look at this this month and I see five road games and up and a home game against Purdue, I'm not saying we're going to lose a lot of these games, but boy, Justin, like eight games. If we went four and four, that wouldn't surprise me. I'm, that's all I'm saying. Like, I just, it's not easy to do that. That is a tough stretch. And I, yes, Bo and, and others, we are better than those teams, except Purdue. We are, and I agree with that. But I just don't see how you're going to go through that and, and go seven and one on in that schedule. I don't think that's reasonable. I hope I hope I'm wrong. I will tell you how we're going to go potentially seven and one in that. And that is going to be Wisconsin has the number four Ken Palm offense in the country right now. And I would venture to guess that of the teams that we play, nobody else is probably in the top 30. I mean, we can, I can run down those real quick for you if you'd like, let's see here. Uh, Man, I gotta I gotta dig to even find any of these guys. Iowa has 21, but they also have the 113th defense. So yeah, no, Iowa's defense it, is is, is terrible. Crap. I mean, for sure. I, it's just cautious optimism for me. So let me ask you this, Justin. Okay, so five and three. Uh, sorry, five and three. Five road games, three home. Five road, three home. One of the home is Purdue. Um, what is your February record prediction? And Secondly, will we be at the top of the conference still at the end of the month? Um, that's interesting. I'll say six and two. I think we go. Um, I'm going to say Purdue is one of the losses, and man, I don't. Yeah, I'm going to say it's the other one's Nebraska. Like it's coming. Wow. Up so you week. think we're losing the next two games? P- potentially, yeah. Wow. I think I think that Nebraska plays so well at home that if we don't come in locked in the defensively for that game, we most definitely can lose that game. Um, in terms of Purdue, they are what they are. Everybody else I feel pretty good about. Um, it's going to be one of those things where we just need to be locked in. We could be locked in against Nebraska, still lose that game, just because they could shoot the lights out at home. Yeah, listen, Tominaga is annoyingly good and annoyingly, you know, just efficient at times, especially from three. Um, so I think five and three is where my as my official for a prediction, if you will, this month. Um, I think that we will. I actually, Justin, I actually think we're going to beat Purdue next weekend. Um, I do. I would I love think, it. That would be huge that, for our, that, our title. That, that, it's going to be, you know, listen, Purdue... They they lost they lost two just junk road games on the road and they've beaten really good teams though but their hardest game of the season is going to be next weekend in Madison that that is the hardest game they will play the rest yeah. of the year in the in the conference one hundred percent maybe well, did they play Illinois at home already 
Do they play? I don't know what their Illinois home and home or situation is, but um, I, I just feel like that's that's the toughest game they're going to play. So I think we're going to win that. I do agree with you. Nebraska does scare me. I'm going to say five and three. If we get through though, if we get through this week, then I think we only lose one. I think if we yeah. get through, then I think, I think our momentum will, will be with us. I mean, listen, mo- more than likely, we're going to be a top ten team to coming to come tomorrow. Uh, so it'll be a top 10 matchup. I think that'll just hype the guys up. I, I think we win next weekend, but I really, I don't know. I hope. Um, so, and and I don't think we're going to be on top because uh, I think we go five and three. And I think we'll pretty, will be ahead of us at the end of the month, but we'll still have a shot. We'll still have a shot to win the conference because we do play them at the end of the year at Purdue. So, yeah. I mean, unlikely that we, uh, that we win that, but you know, <laughs> so we lose at home and beat, beat them at Mackey. Yeah. Well, gosh, winning gambler says five and three, maybe. Um, Bo Dragon says they split with Purdue and maybe lose to Illinois. Illinois game, we only play once. Uh, someone asked that question earlier. Uh, we played them at home actually in the first game in March. So we we can I mean, just take up the uh, the Illinois message board nonsense that they've been posting and just put that in the locker room before that game, and we'll come out there and bury them by twenty. <laughs> they are the most arrogant fan base ever. Oh my gosh. They always have been, honestly. It's like uh, we went I, to a hey back in 2006 or whatever it was, we went to a final four. Congrats. We've we've done yeah. it twice since then. Hey, we went to a title game. <laughs> I mean, stop, Illinois, stop. Um Tyler Schieber says not signing like believe with Rajiv right now. An epic one for Badger says, I think Bo stole Rajiv's Kool-Aid. Yeah, that's probably <laughs> true. Um, listen, I'm all for positivity. I just I worry about this kind of stuff, but okay. Uh, let's leave it there for basketball. Let's move on to football. Uh, Luke Fickle has completed his hiring. So hopefully, maybe, hopefully it's done. Um, safeties coach Alex Grinch, former defensive coordinator at USC and Ohio State. This is splitting opinion in the fan base. Um, I'm curious as to everyone who's listening to the show right now, please put your thoughts about this hire in the comments. I'm going to just flash up as much as I can, and we're going to talk through some of them because. You know, when Locked on Badgers Discord and some other things, there's been a lot of back and forth. The guy hasn't really been a good defensive coordinator. He's he's actually struggled. He got fired in his places. Uh, Ohio State's had Ohio State had a bad uh, defensive year when when he was their coordinator. However, he's not coming in to be the defensive coordinator. He's coming in to be the safety coach. So um, your initial thoughts on that, Justin, and how you sort of where you fall on the discourse that's happening within the fan base right now about this hire. I think that the defense is run by Trestle and an extension, Luke Fickle. So you're going to have a muzzle on this guy, regardless of what his coaching habits have been in the past the expectations are going to be firmly planted out there. I believe he worked, he worked under fickle, didn't he at Ohio state? I believe so. Yes. I don't well, know he, that for yeah, sure. Right before fickle left for, I think the last year or whatever that he was there with them. 28 was it 2018. And then he jumped to Cincinnati. Yeah. Yeah. I would have been around that time. Yeah. Okay. So they might, they might've worked together. Um, if that's the case, I mean, he's a safety coach. If he's a decent recruiter, I don't care. I, I've seen people say, how good was the actual safety room this last year? Well, other than Hunter Wohler, there was nobody that I would say was above, above average at that position. I mean, Zachman had several games where he had busted coverages that led to big plays or touchdowns, and Latou couldn't tackle anyone to save his life to start the season. Um, <laughs> missed so many tackles. Oh, my God. Um, so it's the way I kind of take a look at it is, if he's a good recruiter, does it really matter? Like they'll get, they'll collectively build a good defense. I don't think that any of these guys are going to be terrible because of the fact that you brought in Alex Grinch on the back end. Now, is it possible he's not a great teacher and they end up having some assignment issues? That's a possibility, but I guess we'll see on that. And if that's the case, then I would not anticipate him being here for more than a year. Yeah. Um, we got some good comments on here. I'm going to put up some comments on the screen and talk about these. Phil says, and I love this comment, hard to get a good position coach. Any good position coach at a power five is looking to become a coordinator. That's a really good point. Like Mm -hmm. it's not easy to just go get a guy. I mean, you've, you've really got to take chances on guys at the position level because you've got coordinators there. He's not running the defense. Um, Zach Bartz Grinch failed as a DC, not as a safeties coach. There's less on his plate and possibly a chip on his shoulder. He's a no name on the recruiting trail. And this could be beneficial for both parties. 
I love this comment too. Tyler Streber says, Josh McDaniels has been a great coordinator, but awful head coach. Maybe Gritch is similar. He's just not good at position coach. Um, he's just good as a position coach, but a coordinator is a little more, uh, much for him. Uh, Phil says we need to trust Fickle on this. He knows what he's doing. So here's my my thought on all this. I, I these comments I put these up there because I feel like they're they're, they're there's a nice like and please send more. I, I love all the the interaction here because I'm curious about people what people say on this. To me, I'm with you, Justin. I think he's a fine hire because he's not a defensive coordinator. Like to me, this isn't really like. Does he does he understand the position? His coach safeties before? Yes, he knows he knows the position. He knows what he's doing in this in this area, and it's all about the recruiting. Fickle has a defense. Tressel has a defense. This is not. We're not bringing this guy in to say, yeah, bring us what you're what we're, you've done oh, yeah, to build out our defensive scheme. Yeah, right. It's not right. like you know we're gonna take what you've done and and try to implement it here. No, you're going to adapt to our system. Like, and that's my, I mean, that's just, obviously that's probably what happened here. It's like fickle and trash. Like, okay, well, this is the defense we're going to run. This is, this is the guys that are in our room right now. These are the people that we're going after. Obviously you've seen a heavy push for athleticism in the defensive secondary, which has been excellent to see. So he's coming in to coach the safeties. Okay. Like I, I'm okay with that. And, and I agree that it's not like, you know, he, if he wasn't great at this, doesn't mean he's not going to be good at this. It happens all the time. You can look across co college, NFL, any sport, anywhere. You see people that are like, they're good coordinators. They send them to the head coaching level. They don't work. Vice versa, position coaches and coordinators, same thing. It's okay. And the one thing we have learned about Fickle is if he doesn't like it, he's going to make a change, Justin. So I'm okay with it. Like If he believes in this guy, if he, if he thinks that that... Grinch is the guy for him and to, to, to manage the safety group. I think it's totally fine. I, I, and I'm not saying a lot of people have this discourse. I think just some people have said, and it certainly has been a, a narrative that, you know, we're, 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 his, his coaching record at the coordinator level is not that good, yeah. but it doesn't bother me. Yeah, I agree with that sentiment. I mean, I mean, I, I can't take anything away from it. I've heard people say he's not a great recruiter. And the way I look at it, the, this guy has been a coordinator for the last, what five years he's not going to be the primary on most of these people like he's he believe me he's involved in the recruiting so but he's not going to be the guy who's accounted for when they show the people that have been brought in if the defense as a whole looks like it's bringing in talent that tells you more about Al alex grinch than what whatever some mock-up thing that they show for recruiting on one of these recruiting sites he's involved in all of it he's not going to be the primary unless they say this is a guy we have to get so I'm going to take the lead on this one to try and lock it down. That doesn't happen. Like the, he's going to be kind of his hand, have his hand in everyone's, you know, area to, to kind of get things going. Epic one for Badger says, can we expect Grinch to be above, above average um, recruiter? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we can because also, you know, we wouldn't be hired for one. Fickle right. would not bring in somebody exactly. who's like that's part of Fickle's recruiter. requirements. Like he's not bringing a guy in, in my opinion, that, that of course those discussions have been had. So, I think there is a there is a niche for him on this team, right? Like he he obviously you've seen people coaches throughout the years go to other schools they don't succeed they'll go somewhere else and they'll take a step down. I think that's what this is. It's okay, go back to being a safeties coach, do what you do well, we'll build it up from there. You know, here is what your expectations are from a recruiting perspective, and I think Fickle knows his recruiting because he's worked with him before. You know, he's seen what the the kind of success he had from that in that world in Ohio State doesn't really bother me man i think this is okay um and and i think most people in the in the chat tend to agree with us as well let me ask you this we've had a lot of changes on the coaching staff um thus far do you think there's too many changes have too many changes happened this year that it concerns you going into next year or are you comfortable with the amount of turnover that the that we've seen on the coaching staff i don't think so i mean they're kind of spread out it's it's not something that I'm overly concerned with overall. I think offensive line actually needed to be dealt with based off of what the the comments that were coming out from the players. So you you had to lock that in. Um, Safety is not a position. That, it's kind of like the running back coach position of the defense to an extent. Um, not that I'm taking a dig at the fact that that safeties don't need to be incredibly gifted or you want a gifted coach there because really good safety play can mask a lot on defense. Um, but I do think that 
overall, I'm not overly concerned with the transition. It's going to be the same defensive scheme. Basically, as long as the principles are being taught the same, we should be fine. I would feel a lot more uncomfortable if we had coordinator changeover where we're making change in scheme and having to do some of those things or verbiage or all the other stuff. Most of these things should be staying the same. So if that's the case, I'm, I'm not overly concerned about what's going to happen. Wide receiver coach, I'm actually really high on Guyton. I think he's going to be a better recruiter at that position, and I think long-term that helps us. So if that's the case, that's huge for us. Yeah, and for me, um, when I when I ask about the too many changes thing, it doesn't bother me because it's not one of the coordinators. Mm. It's not, you know, Longo and Tressler are still there. The big three on that coaching staff are there, and so it's fine. And there were many things last year where we didn't, we weren't happy. We weren't happy with the two huge, unacceptable losses to Indiana and Northwestern. We weren't mm. happy with our inability to play to 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 use our receivers and what we expected them to be. Um, so if changes are needed, changes are needed, and it's fine with me. I have no problem with that. I think when you, if you, if if you were to tell me that Longo was gone and Trussell was gone and he's going to start fresh, then I'd be like, okay, wait a second. That's not what's happening here. It's just the, the 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 brain trust, if you will, is staying intact, and we're just having a couple pieces kind of going off of it, and and they're finding their stride. You know, this is new to them, right? So we have to sort of feel feel it out and understand what's going to work and what's not going to work. And I. In Fickle We Trust, I've said that many times. I'm very much um, a fan of it. A couple quick comments here. Kathleen Burrows, Grinch will be okay if he can recruit. Others on staff will keep the safeties in good shape. Bo Dragon says, everything is setting up perfectly. Harbaugh gone, Dave feeling the pressure, Fleck is garbage, and Bo Nick's gone. Um, all right, Justin, uh, let's get into some recruiting a little bit. Uh, as you know, Justin is our recruiting in-house recruiting expert on the Bucky Report here. Uh, you've been doing evals on Twitter. Talk about some of the guys that you've been evaluating, and what's uh, what are some of the next couple guys you see coming into the 25 class? Yeah, the, the two guys that I'm going to bring up real quick are going to be um, just the guys that did evals on this week are Isaiah West, um, running back probably near the top of the board for this this team. He's really high in Wisconsin. I like him. I believe he's six foot two fifteen ish right now. He's a big kid. He's got good quickness. He's he's got a nice little bit of uh, twitch to him when he carries. I think he's got good vision and he's he reads his blocks really well. Um, and he's the kid. He reminds me of a bigger Ches Malusi. They have very similar running styles, but he's a bigger kid. Like Ches is about six foot or five eleven and 185 pounds this kid's significantly bigger he does not have a huge home run threat type speed i would say he's probably more in like the four or five range so he's a guy who can run well he's just not a guy who's going to be taking off and blowing the doors off everybody he's gonna he's gonna require good blocking to get loose zach bart says i love west film especially for the offensive scheme we run dude can absolutely ball good hands too very good receiver Yes, that's the thing that I noticed right away is just that the film shows that he can catch the ball, which is always a weapon that we need out of the backfield. And look, I let's keep the recruiting talent going here with the running back position. We've done it. We've done an amazing job uh, in this year's class, uh, of course, with Dupree and Jones. Um, so, yeah, that's that's a big one. What's who's the other guy you wanted to get into? Yeah, the other one was uh, I grab his name here real quick. Justin not being on top of things coming into this. Justin, Justin, Justin. Oh, where are you? Man, I really retweet a lot of stuff. <laughs> he does retweet a lot of stuff. But by the way, while Justin looks for that, um, at Bucky Report JJ is uh, his Bucky, his Twitter, his Bucky handle, his Twitter handle. He's been doing good evals on there. So he'll, he'll not only does he gives you the stats on the guy and he breaks down his evaluation, then he also gives you his Badger um, comp, which I think is great. It's a nice way to really understand a player, um, you know, before you before you look at their film. Did you find your guy yet? Uh, Fitzgibbons. There He's you go. A kid from down in Illinois. Uh, he is a defensive end. I think he's a guy they're going to probably put at the five tech. Um, really violent hands. Has really nice burst off the ball. I think he's a guy whose body needs to be reshaped a little bit. There's just some. He's, he's just growing into his frame, but probably about six three, six four. Uh, he's listed in a variety of different heights and weights based off of Twitter huddle. You know, depending upon if he's if he's a two sixty and they can get him to be like a a really 
ripped out 275. I think he's a guy who can show really good burst and be a problem. Um, heavy hands, uses them well, has good burst, and he has a really good job of getting skinny and getting past guys. And really does a nice job attacking half a man. I hear that all the time when they talk about offensive linemen attack half the body so you're not taking them on straight up. And he does an excellent job of doing that to get past guys in, in his uh, pass rush. So I think he's a guy who could be a plus player. I don't know if he's necessarily going to be a guy who's going to be a freak show, but I think he can be a really good high motor five tech guy that that causes some real real disruption in this system that we don't have right now. Um, another question here. Where did it go? I just had it up here. Dark Ray says, did we do anything uh, with the O-line this offseason? Well, Jake Renfro is going to be starting, which is great. Um, and uh, we got a new O-line coach. So I'm, I'm excited. Like, I'm actually – okay with the o-line going into next year plus plus we got some good recruits coming in as well you know my love how i love about how my love for kevin haywood and how i think great he's going to be so i think we're okay in that position justin what are we missing from the 2025 class when you look at that where the class is right now cooper catalano cody haddad uh rusky jameer scott remington moss landon Locke, and uh, brandon ains what are we missing what positions are you looking for them to to start to really fill this class out with i think it's gonna be wide receiver Obviously, they need to get a couple of bodies in this class to Boundary really build guys. out that room. Um, defensive line is the other. Those are probably the two biggest positions that I think we need to see it from. Um, so some plus talent that potentially can play on the outside in the wide receiver room, and then some guys who can be disruptive on the defensive line. You have some nice big bodies that are in the, set for the middle that I think can cause some pressure, but you need some guys that can play that five tech or you know at least if we play – Two, four, five, have some guys that are big enough, but still offer some level of pass rushing. And if you're playing nickel, so that's ideally what you're looking for right now. Agreed on those positions. We desperately need uh, those filled out. Um, so going into this week, we're going to be doing a three big things um, because we've got two huge games coming up. So I think we play Nebraska on Thursday. Is that correct? Is it Thursday that we play Nebraska? I'm almost positive. I believe so. Um, I think it's Thursday. And then, of course, we play um, Purdue, the big one, on Sunday in Madison. It is Thursday that we play them. So, yeah, we've got some uh, – we kick off a really, really big February. So we'll be doing the three big things this week to break down those games, give our predictions there. But a big week ahead, Justin. Um, let's end with this comment here. Epic One for Badger says, should we expect TVD to perform at a higher level than Tanner? I think so uh, because he can throw the deep ball a little bit better and he, we're going to have some accuracy cl things cleaned up. Now you lose some things that you that you had with Tanner, uh, but I, I expect a lot out of TVD. Do you? I think the offense will just be less disjointed this year to overall, and I think that will make a massive difference in terms of his stats. I expect him to be better statistically. Whether that means that we look at him and say he's playing at a higher level will be interesting to see. I thought that Tanner was such a gamer that it's going to be interesting to see how well Tyler plays. Now there's a chance that Tyler, if the if the receivers and everybody's kind of in sync. He could have some really good, impressive stats this year, um, and especially if the defense can help him out too. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to fit well in in Longo's system. Um, Tyler Schubert says, um, "I would. He won't have Skyler Bell dropping TDs left and right." That's fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. But it was a good week for the Badgers. Hopefully, we're in the top ten tomorrow for the basketball team. Football offseason continues to roll on. Check out Justin's uh, evals, and I'll keep doing my player ratings on on my Twitter at Rajiv Badgers. Um, after every game, and we'll be having our Bucky Port player of the game. Justin, final thoughts going into this week. Let's find a way to win these two games, because if we do, then they are in the catbird seat for the rest of the season in the Big Ten. Like You, you will have two games on Purdue, and you will have most of the teams that you're probably most worried about losing to out of the way. Yeah, I agree. I mean, this this week is so massive for us, and you're right. I mean, if we win both of these games, we're probably winning the conference because, yeah, two-game lead, and then the schedule eases up a bit, so we'll see what happens. But, uh, you know. Let me grab one more comment, comment up. Yeah, Craig, he Craig Heinrichs, do we have a chance with Farrakhan? Uh, it doesn't hurt that we have Mabry Matoyer on, the, on our roster. This kid is blown up. He's got an Ohio State offer now. He's got an Alabama offer, and they love – De Boyer's offensive scheme, apparently, his parents and his family. So I would love to say, yes, we have a good shot at him. But I think with the, the names that are getting thrown in there, it's going to depend where he is on their list. But he's he's a freak show. If we could get, if we could get him in the class, it'd be great. 
I mean, that would be an, that'd be amazing. I, mean, I would love to have Farrakhan in the class. All right, with that, look for us uh, midweek to talk about the Purdue and Nebraska games. Um, appreciate everyone listening and tuning in. And with that, on Wisconsin. On Wisconsin. Thank you for listening. If you enjoy the show, subscribe to our YouTube channel at The Bucky Report or The Bucky Report Podcast from wherever you get your content. Until next time, on Wisconsin.